Today, we're going to talk about nephrotic syndrome. As stated in the name, it is a syndrome or a collection of symptoms which typically occur together and not a disease in itself. One of the functions of the kidneys is to clear the body from toxic and unwanted waste. And the way it does that is by filtering these substances out of the blood. So in the glomeruli of the kidneys, we have the filtration barrier. The filtration barrier is made up of three components, the fenestrated capillary endothelium, the basement membrane, and the podocytes, uh, which are referred to as the epithelium. The fenestrated capillary endothelium has openings, or fenestrations, that allows only small molecules to pass through. This will repel red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets, uh, preventing them from being excreted in urine. Next, we have the basement membrane, which contains negatively charged molecules, uh, namely type 4 collagen, uh, wrapped in heparin sulfate. As a result, the basement membrane will repel negatively charged molecules, such as albumin, and it also acts as a size barrier, allowing only small molecules through. Finally, we have the podocytes, which are epithelial cells with long foot-like processes that wrap around the capillaries. The slits between the food processes uh, filters blood, acting as another size barrier. So, on a fundamental level, glomerular diseases lead to the breakdown of the filtration barrier, leading to things in the urine that shouldn't be there, specifically red blood cells and proteins. So, on one end, we have nephritic syndrome, where the patient will present with hematuria, or red blood cells in urine, and a mild proteinuria, or protein in urine, and on the other end, we have nephrotic syndrome, where patients present with massive proteinuria and hyperlipidemia. We will only talk about nephrotic syndrome in this video. So, in nephrotic syndrome, the filtration barrier to protein is lost, but the red blood cell barrier remains intact. This may be caused by um, many different things. Um, some of which could be diabetic kidney disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, uh, or amyloidosis. So these patients will be excreting more than 3.5 grams of protein per day, and this will trigger a cascade of problems. So if you're losing protein in the urine, you will present with a frothy urine, and these patients will have low albumin as it's being lost in urine, resulting in a low plasma oncotic pressure. So fluid will leak out into the interstitium, causing edema. Another mechanism that leads to edema is that the loss of uh, plasma oncotic pressure leads to a reduction in extracellular volume and consequently glomerular filtration rate which is the rate of fluid being filtered by the kidneys. This, in turn, will activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, increasing sodium and water retention. As you lose albumin, the liver tries to replace that, um, so there is an increase in liver activity, which will lead to hyperlipidemia, or very high levels of total cholesterol and low-density lipoprotein. This leads to two findings in the urine. Uh, these are fatty casts and ovo-fed bodies. In addition, in the process of losing proteins, you may lose a lot of antithrombin-3, which is a natural anticoagulant. Thus, patients with nephrotic syndrome will be in a hypercoagulable state, which increases their risk of thrombosis. Lastly, other proteins that you lose in the urine are immunoglobulins, also known as antibodies, and this will make patients more prone to infection. So, with that being said, here is the classic presentation of a patient with nephrotic syndrome. So they will have a frothy urine, swelling of the ankles, swelling around the eyes, a serum total cholesterol of over 300 milligrams per deciliter, 
and a proteinuria of more than 3.5 grams per day. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe.